Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Glover, and today we're going to be covering the design techniques of Martin Franck. So Martin Franck was married to Henri Cartier-Bresson, and I think they were married since 1970 until his death in 2004. So I'm going to take a look at some of her photos and point out some of the design techniques she uses to make her masterpieces. So surely some of Henri Cartier-Bresson's influence rubbed off on her and it's going to be reflecting in her photos. So let's get into it. I'm going to analyze these in Photoshop and see what we can find. So this first one we have a nice facial expression, nice hand gesture, but let's look deeper into the design techniques. So one thing that really stands out to me is the figure ground relationship and the symmetry. So if we look at the figure ground relationship, we just run an imaginary line around the subject and we can see that her dark outfit stands out against the light background, presenting us with nice figure ground relationship and nice visual clarity. Then we go up around her light head and it, we can see that it's on the dark background and it has good contrast going around and around her body here. Even her hand stands out against the dark background. This bottle of water stands out against the dark background also. So this symmetry that we see, if we split this down the middle vertically, we can see she's right in the middle. If we split it down the middle horizontally, we can see she's above the center line. Okay, and then we look at this hand and it acts as a counterpart to this bottle. So the center is like the fulcrum of a teeter-totter. So you have weight on both sides and you have to properly balance it either symmetrically or asymmetrically. And that's what she's doing here. You've got nice balance in the foreground with the hand acting as a counterpart to this bottle. And then the background characters act as counterparts to each other. So we've got nice symmetry and figure ground relationship with the expression and hand gesture. So now let's see what this one looks like with the grid on top of it. So I'm gonna place the 1.5 basic armature and then turn that around. And we're just gonna see, look at the diagonals. So one thing about these grids is you wanna incorporate more diagonals. So here we can see that these people in the background have the same diagonal of the grid, same exact diagonal. Now, we said this was probably a posed image, so it's quite possible that she had them angle their bodies a certain way, and she positioned them in a certain way to conform to the grid. Yeah, after all, she was married to Henri Cartier-Bresson, so she is gonna probably be influenced by the geometry he always talked about. And now look at her arm, her hand, is the same exact diagonal. When it's the same diagonal like this, we say it's paralleling. So it's paralleling this diagonal. This bottle is locking into the vertical, and so is the hand, the chair is. Okay, so you can see how she might be using this 1.5 basic armature. Now, not to say she's copying Henry Cartier-Bresson, but this could be his influence rubbing off on her. But this is a great way to analyze the photos and see the organization of each photo. So in this one, we have nice aerial perspective. That's when the contrast of the background is reduced and it creates an atmosphere. So we've got some fog or some moisture in the air creating depth. We also have these dominant diagonals which are creating almost like an X shape across the image. And they're hidden because this one on the bottom is like that and then it kind of coincides with this one in the distance. So it's a hidden technique and a hidden coincidence and a lot of the master painters use that. We also have this one in the go in the opposite direction. See how the, the wall runs this way and then it kind of fades away and then it picks up in the grass here? That's called a coincidence. So the top two techniques in this one is the aerial perspective and coincidences. And let's just put this on just to see what it looks like. So there we have the 1.5 armature and we're analyzing it for the organization of the design elements. So we can see it's almost paralleling this Baroque diagonal here. And then the house is on the upper horizontal, right over here. Let's move on to the next one. I really like the figure ground relationship in this one. We can clearly identify that's a person walking. Now I can't tell if it's a man or a woman from this angle, but we have 
figure ground relationship, the dark figure on a light background, and we also have an aspect of view, which means the limbs are spread and we can clearly identify that it's a human being walking. See, all these limbs are spread. And we also have some geometric shapes. We've got the triangular shape here. We've got all this geometry, squares and rectangles up here, all repeating. The diagonal of the staircase is echoing the same diagonal of the shadow. It's a very surreal image. It could be a Dali painting or something. But also, if I'm looking closer, we can see someone's right here fixing something. But it's very interesting and it's very surreal. So let's line up the 1.5 basic armature. And the reason I always line up the 1.5 is because that's the ratio that they shot in, the 35 millimeter ratio is 1.5. Yeah, you can use a Micro Four Thirds grid if you shoot with the Micro Four Thirds camera. And you can use a Root Phi grid if you use a four by five film camera. You can use different grids for different ratio of camera sensors. All right, so this one lines up. This doesn't really parallel. Nothing really locks in, but the design techniques still stand. So what I'm looking for is diagonals paralleling or locking into the grid. And the only one I really see is this one in the ground and the tile. And that tends to repeat here and here and not so much these other ones. This almost parallels, but not quite. This one has some nice figure ground relationship, but it also has separated shapes. So separated shapes is like figure ground relationship on crack. So it's a very complex technique that's hard to achieve, but she's done it pretty well here. We can see that each one of these children are basically separated from the others and from the background. Now, if they had a spective view, some of them do, but if they had a spective view, that'd be even more identifiable. So we want visual clarity usually when we take photos and this figure ground relationship and separated shapes, aspect of view, that all helps us identify the shape of the subject with ease. So this one, he's got an aspect of view, but the arm here is kind of colliding with a, it looks like a, an animal in the background. So that's how we know this isn't Photoshop because if it was Photoshop, they would take this person out or this animal out and improve the separated shapes. And then we've got this girl on the right side. Now let's look at the grid real quick. Now I don't see too many dominant diagonals, but we can see how these subjects are organized on the grid. So this leg almost locks in there. Her head locks in. These two are centered and they coincide with this silo, whatever that's called, a silo in the background. So I don't think she used the grid with this one but she is using design techniques. So this one, I really like. This is one of my favorites from her. It's one of the iconic photos that she has, I think. Right away, we see nice figure ground relationship. We're really focused on the shapes she's capturing. So this boy's body here, nice dark figure on a light background, figure ground relationship. This shape from the shadow is nice and clean. We've got this shape. It's almost an aspect of view if the body was turned a little bit more to the left, we'd see the right hand. And then we've got this girl, nice dark figure on a light background. This doesn't show up as much because it's a light figure on a light background. So that one doesn't work too well compared to these light spheres on the dark background. All right, so we've got nice figure ground relationship. We've got an aspect of view helping us define the form. We've got repeating shapes, these circular shapes. And we've got nice scale. So she's playing with different scales too and capturing that. So we have a large figure, medium figure, small, and then extra small. We've got a hierarchy in the shapes. Now let's line this one up to the grid. Okay, we can see this guy is in the upper right polar point and locked into that vertical. This girl's almost on the upper horizontal and this boy's arm is pretty much locking into the sinister diagonal right here. And so is the leg, the shadow of the leg, and the leg is paralleling the reciprocal. 
So let's move on to the next one. This one right away, you can tell she's capturing the triangular shape right there. So here's a nice triangular shape here. And then this parallels that one. Got a diagonal up here. And then she's got all these shapes repeating with nice shadows being cast. So that's the major design technique she's using in that one, capturing a triangular enclosure there. Now let's look at this with the grid on there. And we're just looking for diagonals that are paralleling or locking in to a grid. We've got this line of the triangle paralleling exactly to this reciprocal. And then this one also is paralleling that reciprocal. And then this point is considered an eye. It's the intersection point of the grid and you can generate new lines through there. I've, I've done a video on this. Any of these intersection points, you can generate new lines. If we generate a line going horizontally across there, it locks into that horizontal. So very interesting. Let's move on to the next one. So I really like this one and visually it's a little bit heavy on the right side, but it still works. First off, we see these repeating diagonals and they're pointing towards the boat. So I don't really teach leading lines because usually when you Google the term leading lines, it refers to a type of photo with a bridge or a road that's just leading down one way. So what I teach is pointing devices. So what devices and what lines are in the composition that can lead the viewer's eyes in different locations. And these can be the stairs in this case. It can be arms and limbs. It can be any straight edge that directs movement in a certain way, that's considered a pointing device. Leading lines, it's, got a, it's kind of got a bad rap with me, so we'll just leave it at that. So these straight edges direct the eye to this ship. And we've got a nice figure ground relationship, dark figure on a light background. This one's even better, and it's an aspect of view. The side view of the boat helps us identify it a lot better than this boat. You know, and the one way to test that is just squint your eyes and you can see the shape a lot better. So when you squint your eyes, this one stands out and you can clearly identify the subject a lot better than this one. And the same goes for this one. This guy on the edge here, typically we don't want high contrast on the edge, but he's all in shadow and the only really high contrasty area is right here but between the legs and then right here. That's called edge flicker. Edge flicker, we want to try and avoid if we can. But in this case, see, we could subdue this area, but this, this one actually helps us identify the shape. And that's an inspective view. So if we squint, we can tell that this is a person walking down the stairs because of the shape it's created. So this one works, and she's using design techniques, figure ground relationship, inspective view, and pointing devices. So let's see what this one looks like with the grid on there. We're looking for the diagonals and seeing what locks into the grid. So this one, if we draw a line at the same diagonal as the stairs, we can see that it's almost paralleling this diagonal. Close enough in my book. Visually speaking, we're just looking at these diagonals and we're seeing if she's capturing diagonals and how we can incorporate it into our art, okay? This ship locks into that diagonal, into the vertical, and then this ship is locking into this upper right polar point here.